Hi everyone, this is Dr. Ryan with Crystal Creek. Today we're gonna to be talking about sanitation, specifically uh, mixing chlorine dioxide. So we've got some show and tell stuff here today. Um, and there's a couple different ways that you can make the disinfectant chlorine dioxide, okay? So first we're gonna start with explaining what it is, okay? And, and so most chlorine dioxide is made by mixing an activator here, which is red, and a base here, which is kind of this clearish yellow color. And the activators and base go through a chemical reaction in the presence of water to make chlorine dioxide. It's a simple formula. You have ac activator, which is also acid, plus base, which is a salt, equals chlorine dioxide. I just remember it with A plus B equals C. It's the easiest equation to remember. Um, and, and it just reminds us that we have to mix equal parts activator and base. Uh, I was troubleshooting a farm one time that was using uh, our product and not seeing the, the results that they wanted to see. And when I went into the barn, I saw that the activator gallon was completely empty and the base gallon was completely full. And when we mix them, we mix them in equal parts. So just a, a check that you may want to do on the farm, especially if you have uh, employees or, or hired help making this product, is you want to make sure that these levels go down at the same time because we should be mixing them in equal rates. Okay, so this is the liquid form of activator and base to make chlorine dioxide. This is one form that's available. The other form is uh, a solid pelleted form where the activator and base are in this little tablet together and they are activated in the presence of water. Okay, so this is the easiest one. So we're just gonna start with this. This is a 20 gram tablet and this is a gallon of water. It's very easy to make this chlorine dioxide solution. You simply open up the packet and expose this little puck, 20 gram puck of activator and base salt mixed together. You drop it in the water and what you'll see is it starts to undergo the chemical reaction. Chlorine dioxide is a yellow gas. And we mix it in water because it keeps it suspended. If this is our container of water, when you put in the chlorine dioxide, you have your activator acid and your base over here and they're floating around and eventually they meet each other and they go through a chemical reaction. So your A meets a B and they make your chlorine dioxide, okay? And as these are floating around, more chlorine dioxide is being made, okay? And what happens is chlorine dioxide as a gas wants to exist in a gas form in the atmosphere. So it wants to float up and go off into the air as a gas. But chlorine dioxide, chlorine dioxide is also kind of sticky in bonds to water. So as it travels up through here to try to get away and go out into the atmosphere as a gas, it bonds with a water molecule and it's trapped there. So here what you'll see, we know that there's chlorine dioxide present. It's a yellow gas. Our water turned yellow. If we were to just leave the cap off of this for a week, the vast majority of this chlorine dioxide would gas off into the atmosphere and we would now just be quote unquote sterilizing with water. It wouldn't, we would not be effectively cleaning our tools. Um, there's a couple different ways that you can measure how much chlorine dioxide is in here. Now, just for some fun show and tell, we just made this today and one 20 gram tablet will make a 525 part per million solution, okay? So we're going to use our good friend math here to do some things. So if we take a 20 gram tablet into one gallon of water, it gives us 525 part per million chlorine dioxide. Now, what if you don't want 525 part per million? Well, you could take that tablet and put it in a five gallon pail of water. And again, we just use our good friend math, a 20 gram tablet 
into five gallons is 105 part per million. And you can ask yourself, well, Ryan, 105 part per million, I read somewhere I'm supposed to use 100 part per million. Well, I went to public school, and we're just going to round this down to 100 and call it good enough. This isn't, this isn't anything that we have to be that precise with. Okay. Now, what if you don't want 100 part per million? Well, options abound. Uh, you could take, what if you want 50 part per million? Okay, well, then you could take this gallon and put a half of gallon of this into this five gallon pail and now you have 50 part per million, okay? Or what if you wanted perhaps 35 part per million? Well, you can take this handy dandy 15 gallon drum and put a 20 gram tablet in here and now you have 35 part per million. So we can mix whatever kind of concentrations we want for chlorine dioxide. The most common is 100 part per million for most cleaning purposes. So what I'll have a lot of our farmers do is they will make up, mix up a 15 gallon batch of chlorine dioxide at 100 part per million, either using the tablets or the appropriate amount of liquid. Um, there's a mixing guide on here. So if you wanted to make 15 gallons of 100 part per million chlorine dioxide, you would take six ounces of activator and six ounces of base, add them into 15 gallons of water, and uh, you would make 15 gallons of 100 part per million solution. I want to talk about, people ask me, how long is my chlorine dioxide mixture going to be good for? And the answer is, that's completely dependent on how closed up it is. Again, we talked about if we leave this without a lid on it, open to the atmosphere, over the course of a couple weeks, the active ingredient, chlorine dioxide, will gas off into the environment, and you'll be left with nothing but water. Okay. But just this is kind of fun here. This is a batch of chlorine dioxide that I mixed up at 500 part per million back in 2017. Okay, so that's almost five and a half years ago. So we can test and see what the concentration is. And we do that by using these Lamotte strips. Okay, so uh, we sell these and it's just like a little dipstick. And what you do, almost like a urine ketosis stick for a cow, what you do is you take one of these sticks, you dip it in the liquid, you wait for two seconds, and there's a color change. Okay, compare it to the, to the color guide here, and I can tell that although I made this 500 part per million almost five and a half years ago, I've kept it sealed, and it's still at 25 parts per million. Okay. Uh, this is some chlorine dioxide that I made uh, at 250 parts per million. You can see just visually that there's more active ingredient in here. This stuff is starting to lose its yellow color. Chlorine dioxide is a yellow gas. The more strong the yellow color, the more chlorine dioxide that's in the, that's in the mix. Okay, so I made this stuff at 250 parts per million uh, a year and a half ago. So let's see what that tests at. Again, it's been sealed the whole time. Okay, so uh, same process as before. Uh, this one's 250 part per million. So we've lost uh, little to no active ingredient on this. So again, as long as your chlorine dioxide stays sealed, uh, it will stay good. And if at any point you're mixing up a larger volume on your farm, say something like, like a 15 gallon drum of this, and you ask yourself, I wonder if this, maybe you're down to like here, there's a little bit left, and you wonder if it's still good. You just take one of these Lamotte strips, put a little drop on there, test it, and it'll tell you where you're at uh, and if it's still active or not. We also have this, um, this sticker that whatever container you make your chlorine dioxide in, we put this sticker on it indicating that this is now your chlorine dioxide concentrate. Okay, so you put it here on this 15 gallon drum or you can put it here. And that way it uh, helps your employees or staff know uh, what's in the barrel and, and you can also write on here, you know, what the date was and what the concentration was, things like that. Okay, chlorine dioxide being, uh, we've mentioned a couple times that it's a, that it's a yellow gas, uh, extremely effective disinfectant. Uh, it smells like, to me, it smells like chlorine if you go swimming in a pool. Uh, but because it does gas off into the atmosphere, 
Uh, you want to mix this in a well-ventilated area, and you certainly don't want to just sit here and huff this uh, and smell it in. It, it's not uh, it's non carcinogenic, but it is a respiratory irritant, so it can cause some coughing. Um, so just be aware of that as well. Moving on, uh, we covered using the tablet. Let's just talk about the liquid again. It's the exact same concept. Remember that the tablet had the acid activator and the base salt pressed into that tablet, and then when it hit the water, it activated. Okay, that's one way of making chlorine dioxide. Another way is using the liquid activator and base where we will mix an equal part of activator acid and base salt in water to create the chlorine dioxide. Um, one thing to think about when you're, look, when you're buying chlorine dioxide, there's multiple companies on the market that sell it. And you need to do a little math and look beyond the price per gallon. And you need to consider the percent salt in the base. Okay, so we're going to just do a little math example together here with uh, some numbers just to illustrate how this works. Okay, so um, our salt, the concentration of the salt in our base uh, is around 28%. Okay, there's other companies out there that are selling products that have an active uh, amount of salt in their base at roughly 2.8%, okay? And what that means is if you were to buy that product, you would need to use 10 times the amount of base to get the same amount of active ingredient as you would with one times of ours. So it would take one gallon of our 28% product would have the same, would make you the same amount of part per million of chlorine dioxide as 10 gallons of their 2.8%. Now they're not 10 times cheaper than us. They're only about half the cost per gallon of us. But when you equate that to amount of money spent per active ingredient, it's actually five times more expensive to buy that competitive product than ours because it's such a low concentration. And to me, this is kind of a buyer beware situation in the market is always look and see uh, what are you paying and what is the percent salt in the base and make sure you're making your purchasing decisions um, on an equal comparison, not just what's your price for a gallon of activator and a gallon of base. Uh, as far as I know, we are the most concentrated product in the market as far as our percent base salt. I have not seen anyone out there even nearly as close to us. We do this because it makes our shipping more effective. So instead of just shipping gallons of water to our customers, we have concentrated this as much as we can so that we have less shipping costs uh, to get this product to our customers. To make chlorine dioxide using your activator and base, again, you would choose whatever size container you want. It's very common for our customers to make up 15 gallon drums at a time. Uh, you would then take activator and base, I'm not gonna do this, um, but you would take uh, something like a pitcher with some measuring uh, marks on here and you would measure out six ounces of activator, pour it in here, six ounces of base, pour it in here. There's already 15 gallons of water in here. It goes through the chemical reaction. Now when you're using the liquid activator and base, the chemical reaction will take a little longer than this. Uh, the tablet turned yellow almost immediately. For the, the activator and base liquid uh, version, it will probably take somewhere on the order of eight hours for that chemical reaction to complete in here and turn the liquid this type of, this type of yellow. Um, what a lot of our customers will do then is this is a good storage uh, way of storing the product here. And then as they need it, they will just pump it out into like a little Hudson sprayer and then they can spray bottles or nipples or penning, whatever they want to disinfect with. Uh, and once that Hudson sprayer is empty, they'll reload it with a stock uh, solution in here. So, okay, so that should cover uh, kind of the intro on how to use uh, and make chlorine dioxide and how to, uh, how to make it practically on the farm so you can use it. It's an excellent sanitation tool. If you have any questions, feel free to call uh, or email us. You can, our toll-free number is 888-376-6777. If you